Hi guys, Adam here from Hands and Bushcraft, and in today's video I'm going to talk about axe types and axe safety. To my right hand side I've got three axes uh, which are Grantle Brux range, they are the uh, splitting hatchet, small fast axe and wildlife hatchet axes. Wildlife hatchet. The length of the handle is 13 and a half inches in length and the head weight is one pound. You use this axe for mainly processing smaller pieces of firewood down, um, but you can also use it for, for carving, because you can ad adapt the, the way you hold the axe um, to give you more control, and the handle length does get in your way. Okay, so let's have a look at the small fast axe. The small fast axe has a uh, head weight of one and a half pounds and a handle length of 19 uh, inches. It's about fingertip to elbow in length, um, it's used predominantly for processing slightly larger pieces of firewood because you've got the heavier head and handle length. So you can use this two-handed for chopping so you can put more power down into the axe uh, and split through large pieces of wood. Um, you can use this for carving, although it's, I find it more difficult because you're holding the throat of the, uh, the axe and the handle length gets in the way. I find it, it tends to... Uh, bash into your, your, your ribs and, and your sides so when you're, you're trying to carve so um, I opt for a smaller axe. Okay so the splitting hatchet. So this has again a, a 19 inch handle um, but the head weight is two pounds so it's meant for processing larger pieces of firewood even more than the um, small forest axe. The head shape is different as well to the other two axes uh, it's more chunkier around the sides here um, and it's got a more severe angle so therefore when you're hitting into the wood it's cleaving the wood apart more than slicing wood as the other two axes do. It's got a protective collar as well here um, so it protects the actual neck of the, the axe so if you're hitting into say for instance uh, a knotty piece of wood trying to split that down um, you could damage the, the necks on the small forest axe and even the wildlife hatchet but this helps to protect it. Um, it's really good weight and it will plough through and split through most large pieces of, of wood without any problems really. Okay so before we use an axe we should always make sure we've got a safety zone around us um, so that that's our chopping area. We've got a sturdy platform of which we can we can chop on to and um, we've got nothing around us or above us which if we're swinging our axe around is going to catch on to anything. The ground is ideally level um, so it gives us a nice stable platform to begin the process. We place our firewood on the far side of a chopping block so that if we do miss, the um, axe heads on into the chopping block and not us. I'm in a standing position right now and if you notice I've got my feet about shoulder width apart as well and my knees are slightly flexed so that when I'm chopping down I try and keep the axe head parallel to the piece of wood so it forces it down so the whole bite of the axe hits into wood and not just um, one part or the other. If I do miss, I want the axe to head, head on into the chopping block. If it does miss a chopping block, say for instance if I'm a bit too far away and it misses a chopping block, it swings between my legs and not into my shins. If you're not using the axe, you should always make sure that the sheath is on the axe or it is masked into the chopping block. Okay. Uh, always make sure you put the sheath in your pocket as well, um, ideally in, in a puffer pocket so that it doesn't get lost. When we come to use the axe, again, take the axe out, make sure that there's nothing on there which is uh, slippery at all. We don't want anything which um, can aid in losing control of the axe. 
Um, you're wearing gloves. Um, woolen gloves to take off because they've got no grip on at all. You can get more um, of the the grippier style gloves, which have the uh, kind of rubbery membrane on the outside. Um, they're generally okay if you want to um, to do that. I generally go barehanded in different parts of the world. So, for instance, if you're in um, Canada uh, in the winter, you you're not going to want to use this without any gloves on. So, you you adapt to the situation which you're in. The piece of wood here um, with the small fast axe, so I've got it on the, the chopping block there, stable platform, make it a little bit closer so you, you test, test where you want the axe to land and make sure you, you, you adjust yourself. So two-handed approach, I'm going to slide the axe handle through my, my right hand as I come on down to make sure I get full amount of power and control. My left hand is always going to be holding on to the, the bottom grip of the axe by the, the toe so therefore it won't slip anywhere and I'm ready. So you follow through and you split on down. Okay so now let's have a look at the splitting mall. Again, nice stable position. You can see, went through that wood without a problem at all. Okay, so the next technique I'm going to show you is called bastoning. It's where you have a longer piece of wood which you want to split down evenly. And uh, it's got a smaller diameter as well, so it's a bit more of a, um, a challenge to do by actually coming down and, and chopping onto the, the wood. So with this technique, what we do, we take our wildlife hatchet and we place it across the centre of the wood through the pith. And you can notice I've positioned the axe so that it's to my left hand side, so that when I'm hitting on through and splitting the piece of wood, when it comes through, it's either going to go straight down into the chopping block, like so, or if, if it misses the wood, it goes out into thin air. It doesn't chop on down towards me. So, position the wood like that. We take our handy mallet, and we just give it a good couple of whacks, just to begin the splitting process. Okay, and then mask the axe. So if we want to continue to split this piece of wood down with a hatchet, it doesn't tend to want to balance very well. So what we can do is take a piece of wood and just support it on the chopping block. It's called a helping hand. And we take our axe. Notice I've changed my stance so that I've moved to my left hand side. So when I'm chopping, it's going into thin air like this. And we just take the axe and we just chop on down. Another tip I have is to never cut in low light conditions or when you're tired, because that's when accidents tend to happen. Always carry a first aid kit with you if you're using any sharps um, and have it outside your rucksack and accessible. When I come into Woodland, I take this out and I put it on a stump nearby where I'm using the tools. So should I cut myself, there and it's ready to go. I don't want to dive into my bag and get my bag all messy trying to find this. So it's just a bit of common sense. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button for us and comment in the sections below. It's very much appreciated and look forward to seeing you in the next video soon. Bye for now.